is going on everyone welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be working with gauges and swift ui so we're going to be building this type of component that you see here which is you know a gauge and i've got a watch simulator opened up here because gauges for whatever uh, reason apple decided are only supported on uh, watch os and not ios yet but uh you know Nevertheless, I thought it would be great to go over it, take a look at it. I really like how these look and I super hope they come to iOS because I'll personally definitely be using them. We'll take a look at how to apply this gradient, how to change the you know, text and uh, colors and the circular style and other styles and all that good stuff. So uh, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm, helps out quite a bit. Hit subscribe while you're at it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Open up Xcode, get excited. Let's talk about some gauges. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. Under the Watch OS tab, we want to select the Watch App Templates, and I'm going to go ahead and call this guy Swift UI Gauge, just like that. Let's make sure we spell that right. Make sure both of these are set to Swift UI, language Swift, of course, and we can go ahead and uncheck this notification checkbox. Go ahead and create it. I'm going to toss it onto uh, our desktop here. Let's expand our Xcode window and hit resume in the canvas preview to get our uh, watch showing up. And hopefully it doesn't take too long. Once it does, we can get into creating a gauge. So awesome, there it is. So let's go ahead and delete this text and let's start off by creating a really simple looking gauge. And the way we do that is by, of course, creating a gauge and we wanna give it a uh, value and the value should be a double um, from 0.0, .0 to 1.0. So I'm going to say 0 0.5. And in here, I'm going to give it a text and we're going to go ahead and call this, uh, I guess, speed. And you'll see over here, it gives you this like slider looking thing. And what's nice about this is, uh, you know, it's a really small amount of code that we have to write to achieve it. However, we don't see any minimum value or maximum. It's strictly using the 0 0.5 as like 50%. So we can actually extend the code over here to give us a, you know, a label on the left and the right for the min and max, as well as get that circular looking style, which personally I think looks a lot nicer. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So the next thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna bring in a parameter called in, and this is a range of a double uh, for the minimum and maximum. So we're gonna say zero to a hundred. You'll see that 0 0.5 now sits at the very, very beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this 33.0. So it'll be one third of the way uh, across our slider. So looking good, we've got a min and a max there in this range. We can then add uh, additional parameters to this gauge, which are actually uh, view builder closures. And the first one is going to be the current uh, value label. The next one is going to be the minimum value label. And we want one more. I'm just gonna copy and paste it right below it here. And this one is going to be the maximum value label. So let's go ahead and put stuff in here. So the first one, I'm just gonna go ahead and say speed. This one is going to be zero since that's the min value. And this one here is going to be 100 since that's the max. Let's go ahead and hit try again over here. Sometimes the little preview here takes a little time to get its life together. So hopefully it doesn't take too long. Uh, my syntax looks good. Sometimes you really just need to play with the numbers. So hopefully our canvas decides to cooperate in a moment here. But basically what we will see once it updates is we'll see zero here on the left and a hundred here on the right. So um, let me see what I can do to get that to actually show up. Let's make that be 33. Ah, and there it is. Okay, cool. So we've got zero here on the left. We've got a hundred here on the right. And those are coming in directly from these two here. If we actually go ahead and get rid of these and call this, uh, I don't know, let me call it stuff, you'll see that'll show up here before it. Um, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I don't think most of us like how this looks. So let's make it uh, have a different style. So I'm gonna once again hit Command Z, it will be speed. And we're gonna add a modifier of, uh, I believe it is a, style for the gauge. Let's see, I believe it's a gauge style. There it is, gauge style. And we want the circular gauge style here. And we're gonna first create it without any parameters. And right off the bat, you'll see that now it looks like a gauge, 
uh, albeit our speed label is cut off. So let me actually make this the current value. So we'll say 33. We have the zero to 100 at the bottom. You might want to, in fact, put like a slash here. So, uh, you know, we've got, we got the slash showing up in the middle. Let me hit try again. And it looks like our canvas really doesn't want to cooperate today. So I'll get rid of that. Uh, but anyways, we're starting to look much better. So let's take a look at what parameters we can bring into this circular style. So we've got this uh, tint and a gradient. So I'm actually gonna bring in a gradient, but let's take a look at tint first. Let's make this red and let's see what that does. So it goes ahead and just makes the actual gauge red, but not the, not the actual text inside of it. The way we can change the text is by simply, um, you know, adding modifiers to the text in here. We're gonna add foreground color and I'm gonna say uh, blue. And we're just gonna say blue for all of these, I guess. Let me do that, that, and you'll see these are all blue now. So they're looking much better, um, in my opinion, at least. And let's see if we can get away with making a frame on this because it's kind of small. I haven't actually tested if we can change the frame, but I guess we'll find out in a minute. So I'm gonna make it 100 by 100 and say this is centered. And it looks like it doesn't actually bump up the, the, uh, the actual gauge. I wonder if I can make it resizable. It looks like I cannot. Let's try that. Yeah, it looks like we can't actually change the size of it there, which is unfortunate, but still looks pretty good. So the last thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to use a gradient uh, inside the uh, style there. So let's open up that uh, constructor again, and we wanna use tint with a gradient. And I'm gonna create the gradient as a global at the top. So let's go ahead and make that a gradient. And Right up here, we're gonna say uh, var gradient is going to be a gradient with colors and uh, the colors will be an array. So I'm gonna first say, let's say pink and we'll say purple. Then we'll say, let's go with orange and let's see what that looks like. So uh, now you'll see that uh, it actually has not updated is what you'll see. So let's hit that and hopefully it updates um, reddish orange. I can't really even tell if it's updating. Let's, let me make this a completely different color so we actually know it's updating. So that's gonna be blue and we're passing in the gradient there and we're applying that to the gauge. Let's hit try again. And hopefully this decides to uh, update. It looks like it's taking too long. Ah, there it goes. As soon as I say it's taking too long. So there's our gradient. Let me go ahead and add one more. Let's do a pink on here. Let's see if that updates a little faster. Uh, it looks like this is really not wanting to update quickly, which is slightly annoying. You might want to be uh, using a simulator, it might be faster, but let's, uh, let's add two more and just bump up the simulator. Um, so we're going to say pink, we'll say purple, and I'm also going to say orange. And we're going to select a, a simulator from up here. Looks like I don't actually have a simulator installed. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, you guys will learn how to get a simulator to install. It actually did update here, but I'll show it in this video anyways. If you don't have a simulator showing up, you can go to window and Xcode, you can go to devices and simulators. And then under uh, simulators here, you can go ahead and hit this little plus. And we're just gonna select uh, from this list that we want an Apple Watch. Uh, let's see where it is. These are all iPhones up here. And we've got Apple Watches down here. I'm gonna stick with the Let's go with the Series 6 44 millimeter, and you can even change the OS version. I'm not gonna bother to do that. Go ahead and just add it like so. It'll add it, and then you should now see it in your list here, just like that. Go ahead and hit the Run button, and this should compile into your simulator. So give that a second to boot up. But yeah, that's basically how you can work with uh, gauges in your watch OS apps. I really hope they bring this to iOS because I really like how this looks. Um, and I also really like how simple it is to create some of these. Um, now, because these are view builders, you can actually get away with putting like images in here. They don't have to be text. Here we're saying zero to 100. You might want to actually put in like, um, you know, like if this was temperature, maybe a down arrow and an up arrow. So, uh, you know, you can customize it to fit your needs. Here's our simulator. Um, it's still not showing up. There it is, a little slow there, but for some reason, watchOS is slower with SwiftUI, but there you have it. That's a gauge. I'm gonna stop rambling on. If you haven't liked the, hit the like button already, make sure you do so. 
Uh, check out the TikTok course if you haven't done that yet either. Pre-sale will be ending uh, in just about a few days here. Comment down below if you've got any questions and subscribe while you're at it to join the channel as we grow and learn together. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next video.